guys, everyone, and welcome to a new ASMR Movie Geek video. So today, we're going to be reviewing Spider-Man Far From Home. I just got back from the movie theater. Absolutely loved the movie. Had a great time watching it. The, like, quality of the special effects was fantastic. Like, some of the best I've seen this year, aside from uh, Avengers Endgame, of course. But, really good special effects. Um, really funny movie. Absolutely loved it. And on my way out of the movie theater, I actually picked up a stick of, like, a blue raspberry bubblegum right now. So I'm actually chewing a piece of blue raspberry bubblegum that I bought at my movie theater. And... I don't know if all movie theaters are like this. I know some of them in my area do have a lot of candy, specifically this one. Like, this one has a ton of candy. Like, it has, like, an entire section of just candy. So, I don't know. Let me know if the movie theaters in your area sell a lot of candy, but mine does. So, I decided to pick up some bubblegum uh, as I was leaving. But, yeah, um... Uh, Basically, the first part of this review is going to be spoiler-free to an extent, and the last half is going to be, you know, completely spoilers, everything, so I will give a warning, so if you haven't seen it yet, um, you know, don't uh, go past the spoiler warning part, but um, I'm going to have some gameplay in the background from the Spider-Man PlayStation 4 game. And, I don't know, it just felt like the right thing to do, talking about Spider-Man and having Spider-Man gameplay in the background. And, yes, I know a lot of you want a new Spider-Man ASMR gaming video out, and do not worry. I actually have one uh, planned that I'm going to record in the next uh, week or so. So don't worry, that should be coming out uh, in the near future. But, let's get to the movie. So, uh... I don't know how to say this, but if you haven't seen the previous Spider-Man movie, or if you haven't seen Avengers Endgame or Infinity War, uh, you should probably go see those, just because, like, as soon as this movie starts, it's gonna be spoilers for the previous Marvel movies. So, I, I know I said no spoilers, and there will not be at this, uh, initial part of the review, but you need to have seen the previous movies because basically this entire movie is just references to stuff that happened in previous Marvel movies so if you haven't seen Infinity War uh, maybe pause this video go watch that and then come back but basically Spider-Man Far From Home starts out with like Whitney Houston music and it's really sad actually like I was in the theater the Marvel logo shows up you can see, like, Iron Man there, and for a second I'm like, oh, we don't have Iron Man anymore, you know, he died in Avengers Endgame, I'm so sad. You know, I love you 3000 type thing. So, it starts, and then there's, like, a montage, uh, similar to, like, you know, the tributes that people do on YouTube to, like, their favorite celebrity, a musician, or something that died. That's how this movie starts, like, there's an actual, like, video tribute with Whitney Houston music playing of, uh, like, photos of Tony Stark as Iron Man and, like, Captain America and Black Widow and Vision, you know, characters that have died in the previous Avengers movies, and it's just like, whoa, like, they're really dead, and people are actually, like, you know, in this world, they're very, very sad about this, these things, like, happening, so, I don't know, the movie starts, like, on a real downer, like, you're like, oh, that's so sad, but then it gets kind of funny because it explains, you know, what happened to people that got uh, snapped away by Thanos and then just came back the same age and then all of their friends that stayed alive are like five years older so I don't know all that stuff really really funny and this is just like the first minute of the movie so it's not spoilers or anything but really love that um now this movie uh the special effects are amazing and I really like how this movie works on like two different levels First, it's like a teen, kind of like comedy, like vacation, kind of like trip, like, a, you know, a lot of those like kind of like teen comedies where they go on like a road trip or a vacation. This works as that kind of movie. Like if it wasn't a Spider-Man movie, the writing is so good that you would still like enjoy it because it's a Peter Parker movie where he basically goes on a trip with his school to 
Europe and it's just a lot of fun. There's a lot of jokes and it's really entertaining to watch. Um, and then on the other side, you have a really, really good Spider-Man movie. I loved Spider-Man Homecoming. Really enjoyed that movie. I, I thought it was really, really entertaining. Like, I liked, I really like, um, this Peter Parker. Like, I feel like Tom Holland playing Peter Parker is, like, perfect. He, he is, like, I don't know. I feel like Tobey Maguire was better at one side. I felt like uh, Andrew Garfield was better maybe as Peter. I know some people say Spider-Man. I know some people say Tobey was better as Spider-Man and not Peter. But Tom Holland, I feel like Tom Holland is, like, great at being both Spider-Man and being Peter Parker. And that's, like, perfection right there. So he nails it. And throughout this movie, you get to see, like, Peter Parker side trying to, you know, dang with his friends during this uh, trip in Europe, uh, trying to balance his home life, trying to balance, like, problems that he went through in previous Avengers movies, uh, specifically around uh, Tony Stark. And then you get, like, the Spider-Man side, which is full of action, and these special effects in this movie are out of this world, like, many, many times in the movie I was like, wow, this looks amazing, like, these special effects are unlike any of the others I've seen in, like, Spider-Man movies before, so, I don't know, it just looked beautiful to watch on the big screen, and there were times when I laughed, there were times when I got kind of, like, worried and scared, there, there's actually some, like, intense scenes in this movie, specifically, I'm not gonna say when, but they had, there's some spooky-type scenes in this, like, you're not gonna be expecting them, and you're gonna, you're gonna say, like, whoa, Disney actually let Sony do that, like, wow, but for real, there's some pretty crazy stuff that goes on in this, and I like this movie, I, I, after watching it, I give it an 8 out of 10, that's like a 4 out of 5 review score, very, very high, it's probably one of the best Spider-Man movies I've seen in a while, like, Homecoming was great, but this is better, this is way better than Homecoming, just because there's so much going on, and... I really liked all the dialogue, the camera angles, some of the shots in this movie are crazy, like there's this entire sequence near the end, I'm wondering how they filmed this, they, they must have had like multiple cameras uh, filming at once from different angles, uh, there's a lot of crazy things that they did with this movie, and highly recommend to go see it, especially if you love Spider-Man, um, and if you don't like Spider-Man, and you want to watch like a fun teen comedy movie, maybe you should go check this one out anyway, because even if you don't like Spider-Man, I can see people enjoying this movie just because of how the dialogue and the writing, um, being like of a very high quality compared to a lot of other movies that are coming out this summer, so, really good movie, so, I'm gonna get to spoilers now, we're gonna be talking about movie spoilers, 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 so watch out. <laughs> You've been warned. Okay. So, uh, basically, Jake Gyllenhaal, fantastic actor, one of my favorite actors right now, top ten favorite actors. Um, Jake Gyllenhaal, man, he is such a professional actor. He's really good. He deserves to win awards for, like, every single movie he's been in, like, Nightcrawler, Nocturnal Animals, um... I can go on and on. I, I love Jake Gyllenhaal, so he's really good. And in this movie, he plays a Quentin Beck, who, for Spider-Man fans that already know, he is a uh, villain. Uh, he plays Mysterio in uh, Spider-Man Far From Home. But the thing is, this movie starts out kind of tricking you into thinking, like, oh, Quentin Beck, he's like a good guy. He's a superhero who's helping Spider-Man. Uh, is this gonna give us, like, a Mysterio origin story of how he becomes a bad person? And the answer is, not really. Like, he's already a bad person, just deceiving you the entire movie. So, let's get into that. Uh, so, the movie starts out with, like, uh, Nick Fury and Maria Hill. I mean, it doesn't start out this way, but... They're basically in Mexico. There's, like, some destruction that happened. Some crazy, like, Earth elemental... Um is causing, like, chaos. Some guy shows up, he says he's Quentin Beck, he has, like, a superhero suit, he says he came to help save the planet. 
Nick Fury and Maria Hill, you know, some of the biggest, like, top people working for S.H.I.E.L.D. are like, whoa, we need to help this guy out. So, that's the last time we hear from them for a while. It switches over to Peter Parker. He's at school. Half of his class is apparently, like, five years older than him now, including this guy that wasn't really, you know, important, and now five years later... And everyone, you know, is still the same age, and this guy is not the same age. He's much older, he's more attractive, he's the most popular kid in class, everyone likes him. And Peter Parker, of course, uh, likes MJ and is really jealous of this guy, apparently hanging out with her. So, the school is planning on going on a trip to Europe, you know, it's like a learning vacation. <laughs> and they're gonna visit, like, historic sites in Europe to culturally enrich themselves type of thing. So, Peter is talking to his best friend, Ned, and uh, Ned's awesome, man. I, I love Ned. He, I would watch a movie of just, like, Peter Parker and Ned for, like, hours, just them hanging out, doing stuff. It, it's, just, it's such, like, a genuine, like, relationship, you know, friends. Really good. So, they're just hanging out. They're planning what they're going to be doing on their trip. Ned is, like... Okay, Peter, we're gonna be like two bachelors going to Europe. We're gonna have a great time. We're gonna hang out. We're gonna go explore. We're gonna have great experiences. You know, it'll be the trip of a lifetime. Meanwhile, Peter Parker is like, no, 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 no. I don't want to do that stuff. I, I want to be with MJ. And he's like, he has this entire crazy plan already, like planned out of how he's going to be with MJ during the entire trip. And like, he's like. Okay, I'm gonna try to get to, like, sit next to her, I'm gonna try to buy her something, I'm gonna try to, like, reveal her, like, my feelings, and hopefully she'll reveal her feelings as well, and we're gonna do it right here, and he, like, plans the entire thing out, and Ned's like, dude, like, why, why are you trying to do this, what are you doing, we're gonna go have fun, but Peter does not want any of it, like, he really likes MJ, and of course, you know, Peter Parker likes MJ, so, um, he has all of these plans, so, uh, Peter goes home, uh, his aunt May is there, who's played by Marissa Tomei, amazing actress, she's really good, um, and Happy, uh, Happy Hogan, who is, uh, kind of like, I'd say the guy that Tony Stark left in charge, you guys know him if you've seen the Iron Man movies, uh, he's there, basically, he tells Peter Parker some stuff, like, um, how Nick Fury is trying to contact him, and he gives him something, and Peter's like, eh, whatever, he did, he, Peter Parker does not care about, like, anything that he has to say, he wants to go have a vacation, he's a, you know, teenager, he wants to have a trip, hang out with his friends, he doesn't want to work right now, so he just, like, ghosts Nick Fury, and he leaves for Europe, so, first, they go to, like, uh, Venice, Italy, and it's, like, beautiful with, like, the water, and really nice, and apparently this is where, like, the water elemental strikes. If you remember at the beginning, there's the earth elemental in Mexico. Well, in Venice, there is the water elemental, and, you know, oh, I completely skipped over now some part, so on the way over to Europe on the airplane, um, Peter has, like, a great, this is probably one of my favorite parts of the movie, actually, and I completely skipped over it. Um, there's, like, this whole, like, dialogue between Peter and Ned, and how he's, like, has this crazy scheme to get MJ to sit next to him, so he's like, okay, Ned, I really want to sit next to MJ, help me out, and Ned's like, what do I need to do? So, basically, he goes and tells, like, uh, MJ's friend, who's Betty, that Peter Parker is allergic to perfume, there's a lady sitting in front of a Peter that has a ton of, like, perfume on, it's making him sick, then, like, the teacher overhears and is like, what? A perfume allergy is a serious, like, deal. I'm going to move. And he, like, gets up, gets Peter Parker to sit in his seat, moves Betty, makes her sit next to Ned, and then MJ gets to sit with, like, the cool, older guy from a class now that Peter Parker is extremely, like, jealous of, and he's, like, smirking that he gets to sit next to MJ, and, like, Peter is all the way in the back, kind of, like, annoyed, so it's like, ah, oh, that did not work out as planned, but get this, Ned, Ned, Peter Parker's friend, that the entire time was like, I just want to go to Europe and have fun as a bachelor, he literally sits down, he's, like, completely nervous being next to this, uh, 
girl, Betty, who looks like she doesn't care about him at all. Like, he looks over, says something like, hey, she, like, just ignores him and looks straight, and he's like, uh, do you play video games? And she's like, uh, no. Like, what he asked was, like, the most annoying thing in the world. You know, you guys know how teenage girls act in, in schools, or teenage guys act. They can be really, really annoying. So, especially when they don't like you. So, that's what happened to Ned, and it's like, oh, poor guy. He just wanted, you know, someone to play video games with as, he, as he's on his trip. And then, like, during, <laughs> during the trip, um, they, like, freak out at one point, and he, like, puts his hand on hers, and then, like, they start talking, and then, like, she looks over at him and glances, and then he, like, glances over, and then, like, start talking, and then the trip's over, and apparently they're together. You know, they start calling each other, hey, babe, yeah, what's up, babe? Like, <laughs> and it's, like, hilarious, like, they go from kind of, like, not caring about each other to full-on, like, boy boyfriend, girlfriend, and Peter's like, what happened? And they're like, hey, Peter, Ned's like to Peter when they land, he's like, hey, Peter, I was a boy, but now I'm a man, and it's like, you'll, you'll be here one day, and he just, like, tries to talk, like, all, like, philosophically, like, he has, like, all the wisdom in the world, when, just, like, an hour ago, he was, like, young teenager, wanting to just party and have fun with his friends, and then he's all, like, serious into, like, a relationship, it, it's just, like, the funniest transition ever, I absolutely love that scene. And Peter's like, what is going on? How, how did this happen? And yeah, they're together. So the entire movie, Ned and this girl, Betty, when they're in like Europe, they're just hanging out like a couple of lovebirds constantly calling each other babe and like holding their hands. And it's so funny. Like, I absolutely love that they did that with a movie. Like, it's perfect. So back to Venice, Italy. Um, So they're like riding the what are they called, the gondolas, like the little boats there in Venice, and all of a sudden, um, um, what you call, um, uh, at nighttime, after they ride the gondolas around, they go to, like, a broken down hotel, Nick Fury shows up, angry that Peter Parker, uh, kind of, like, ignored him, he gives him these special, like, artificial, like, AI glasses, like, artificial intelligence glasses that Tony Stark made, and the AI is called Edith, and apparently it's, like, really, really powerful. It can actually use, like, a satellite weapon and all sorts of, like, other sophisticated things. So he gives Peter these glasses and says that, like, Tony Stark entrusted this to him. And also that, like, the, there's these elementals going around trying to destroy um, the world. There's, like, the earth elemental, water elemental. And then Peter Parker's like, what, really, uh, is that what was attacking people earlier? Because as soon as they, like, land in Venice, shortly after the water elemental starts, like, destroying Venice, Quentin Beck shows up in his superhero suit, saves the day, everyone's like, whoa, Peter's, like, really happy that another superhero took care of everything, so he was, like, happy about that. So Nick Fury takes Peter to go meet, uh, Beck. And then Beck explains that he comes from one of the many multiverses, so this got me really excited. Like, I was like, wait, are they actually, like, introducing the multiverse in the MCU? This is, like, the first time they're mentioning it, like, actually. But, spoiler, uh, it's completely fake. Like, he was lying through his teeth when he said this. He just said it to interest Nick Fury and Peter Parker. So, Peter's like, whoa, you come from a multiverse, and Quentin Beck. Uh, whose Mysterio reveals um, that his planet was destroyed by these elementals and his family and everyone he loved, so he made sure to come over to our multiverse, like our timeline, and try to fix things. So Peter's like, whoa, this guy's like bent on saving the world, it's his mission type of thing. So he wants to have a vacation though. And Nick Fury wants Peter Parker to hang out with him and go help save the world with Quentin Beck. And Peter does not want that, so he just decides to leave. Quentin Beck's like, oh, okay. And then they go on, like, a road trip. Um, they go to Prague after this. And on the way there, uh, <laughs> let me see what happens. Wait. 
on the way there, they're like on a bus. Peter accidentally uses the glasses because, um, basically there's like this whole, this whole sequence where, uh, Nick Fury is really trying to get Peter to work for him and help out, and Peter's like, no, I don't want people in Europe to know that I'm Spider-Man. If they know Peter's here, they'll know I'm Spider-Man in Europe, because Spider-Man's never been to Europe, and... Nick Fury's like, oh, yeah, that's true. So he gets, like, a special, like, black Spider-Man outfit specially made for him. He changes, like, the course of the field trip. So they go to where Nick Fury wants them to go and not where the field trip was supposed to go. They kind of tell the teachers that they've been upgraded, but secretly it's just a shield in charge. So they get to the destination, and, like, what happened is, uh... This lady uh, tells uh, tells Peter Parker to like disrobe and put on the new Spider-Man clothes, and Spider-Man's like, "What? Wait, what? Why do I have to do that? Like, you know, he's a young teenager, embarrassed to take his clothes off in front of this very demanding lady. So he like starts doing it. Like he just takes off his pants, and then the annoying, like, really popular dude from his class just opens the door and is like, "Hey, Peter." And then he sees like Peter undressing with this like lady and he's like whoa so then he like pulls out his camera takes a picture and he's like i have to show this to mj peter she has to know i like her and she won't like you after i show this so peter's like no 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 so when they get back on the bus peter uses his special edith glasses which can like hack any like phone he can view all his classmates messages and what they're sending so he like uses Edith to try to like delete the photo, but instead he sends like drones from outer space to like destroy the bus, and then he has to like quickly switch into his uh, you know Spider-Man mode, and try to destroy the drone while distracting his class on the bus. So it's a kind of intense but funny scene, and after this. Uh, trying to remember um they go I, after this i think they they went to prague they were on the way to prague man i'm trying to remember because they visit a lot of places in europe i know they visit like holland the netherlands i think that's closer to the end they, they, they go all over in this movie but basically um the next time they basically have to go to like um i think it's in prague i think it's in prague um the school has to go to like this opera and peter and quentin are supposed to team up and take out another of these elementals one of the more dangerous ones it's the fire elemental and peter's like okay we can do this so uh he sneaks out from this opera that they're supposed to go to and then mj sneaks out and then everyone else sneaks out so no one you know actually goes to the opera they want to go party and then quentin shows up there's like this huge battle crazy special effects at this like carnival and everything's getting destroyed and people are freaking out and peter's like you know powerless to stop what's going on and when everything's almost lost, Quentin's like, he's too powered up, the fire elemental is too powerful, I'm gonna have to, like, sacrifice myself. If anything happens, uh, remember Peter, and he just, like, you know, does, like, hero heroic-type speech, and then he just goes in, destroys the fire elemental from inside, and, like, absorbs all his energy, and then pretends, you know, to be knocked out, and I say pretends because a big reveal is coming very soon. So... Nick Fury after this is like, whoa, we finally stopped it, nice, and then Quentin's like, yeah, that was the last one, oh, it's finished, and then Peter's like, finally someone else that I can rely on so I don't have to always be Spider-Man trying to protect everyone, I can just relax on my vacation, so he goes and takes a drink with Beck afterwards, and Beck and him have like a discussion, and he talks about uh, Tony Stark and his relationship and all that stuff, and Quentin Beck is, like, being his friend and everything. And then Peter's like, hey, Tony gave me these glasses. I, I can't be the next Tony Stark. I can't be Iron Man. I'm not that good. But you're, you're great. 
I think he would have wanted you to have these. And then Quentin's like, no, 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 you take them. And Peter's like, no. And he gives him the glasses, and then he just leaves. And when he hands over the glasses, you know, he renounces, like, his, um, ownership of the glasses. And Edith, who's the AI in the glasses, takes over and gives, like, all control to Quentin Beck, who people have started calling Mysterio, so he calls himself Mysterio as well. And at this point, up until this point, you, you kind of think you know where this movie is going. Peter leaves the bar where they were having, like, a drinks, and then Quentin Mysterio reveals something. The entire background to the bar disappears. Everything about the bar disappears. It was all an illusion created by Mysterio, and if you know the comics, you know Mysterio is like the king of illusions in the Spider-Man universe, like everything he does is fake illusions for the most part. So, then you're like, whoa, 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 wait. So that means that all the elemental attacks, him pretending to be a hero, that was all fake, like he was never a hero, there were never any elementals. And then it's revealed, um, shortly after, I'll get into that, so, Spider-Man uh, meets up with, like, MJ. He wants to hang out with her. They decide to, like, run away to go hang out. They have, like, a conversation on the bridge. MJ is like, are you Spider-Man? And Peter's kind of sad because he thought MJ wanted to talk to him about her feelings and if she, like, liked him and he was going to tell her that he liked her and give her a necklace that he bought for her in Venice. And there's, like, this whole, like, relationship scene going on that's pretty nice to be honest like really genuine and Peter then uh oh wait okay it's not Peter um I believe it's actually MJ that discovers it or something but yeah it's, it's MJ so from the battle that happened earlier MJ was there and she got a piece of like the rubble on the ground and she put it in her purse and then when she confronts Spider-Man at the bridge here, Peter Parker, she's like, you're Spider-Man, Peter Parker. And Peter's like, no, I'm not. And she's like, yes, you are. And then she like pulls out some evidence. And then Peter's like, no, that's a night monkey. That's not Spider-Man. He's like the European Spider-Man. And she, she's not buying it. She really thinks Peter is Peter Parker. And then Peter Parker, you know, just decides out of the blue to reveal his identity to MJ. And then she hands him like the debris uh, from the rubble, he accidentally triggers it, and it's like a hologram projection of the elemental, and Peter freaks out, he's like, what? And then he realizes it was all a projection, it was all fake, all of the attacks were fake, created by drones with hologram projectors on them, really advanced technology, and then he's like, oh no, we've been fooled, and then it goes back to Quentin Beck, who is in like a warehouse and they're planning like a super huge attack on London. Um, they give us some backstory in, into Quentin's past. Apparently he was like a scientist that worked for Tony Stark. Tony Stark, you know, made fun of him, didn't really care about his vision and fired him. And he really took it badly, like really, really badly. He hates Tony Stark. Everything that has to do with Tony Stark, all of the technology that he invented, so he's really angry and wants to take it back. So he orchestrates a severe, like, plan on how he can steal this uh, Edith, like, artificial intelligent uh, glasses operating system thing from Peter Parker by tricking him and tricking the entire world into thinking he's a superhero because with this, he can then create, like, a huge cat catastrophe pretend that he's a superhero, save everyone, and then everyone will call him, like, the new Tony Stark, the new Iron Man, the new kind of, like, superhero, and in actuality, like, in reality, he's completely fake, and he did not deserve any of these things, and he's just doing it for the fame. So, they're planning this, and then it shows that one piece of one of the drones is missing, and he's like, where's that piece? If anyone finds out, they, this entire thing is up, because they'll know the truth. So then they track the location, they find that Spider-Man has it, and then he immediately goes like, we have to kill him, because he doesn't want the information to get out there, so Peter knows as well that they're going to send people to kill him, so him, MJ, everyone, they kind of like escape, and they have to get away from there, so... 
so, um, Peter and the rest of, like, his school trip, they go to, like, Berlin, or London, I forget exactly what's going on in this movie, they travel to so many places, but they travel to a new place, he kind of splits up with his, uh, school, and the school brings up why Peter's always disappearing, especially the popular kid, he's, like, really angry that Peter always leaves, there's a lot of, like, really funny jokes by, uh, Peter Parker's classmates in this movie, like, I'm missing a lot of them, but there's so many good ones. <laughs> One guy actually calls Peter a nerd over and over again, and now he's like a loser, but then he defends Spider-Man all the time, so it's funny because if only he knew Peter Parker was Spider-Man, that would probably, like, completely blow his mind. But, going back to Peter Parker, so he ditches his friends, and he's like, they're gonna be go going after me, I have to go talk to Nick Fury warn him that Quentin Beck is an imposter, he's a liar, and that I gave him, like, really, really powerful technology, so, um, he gets on, like, a train or bus, I forget, he goes to meet with Nick Fury, and then shortly after he, his arrival in, like, a Berlin to meet with Fury, um, he gets into, the, like, a car, Nick Fury shows up and is like, okay, let's go talk about this, and Peter's like, yeah, and then it's revealed to be an illusion, this entire, like, car trip, and then they go in a warehouse, and it's an illusion, and Mysterio is kind of like Scarecrow in Batman, if any of you are familiar, Scarecrow kind of creates nightmares that are completely, like, false illusions that freak you out, and Mysterio kind of does the same thing, like, really elaborate illusions, so Peter is in this, like, warehouse, but it looks like he's an entirely, like, different world in a different room. There's, like, all of these, like, hallucinations happening. And there's this really, really intense scene where uh, Mysterio is taunting Peter, trying to get information from him, like, who he revealed um, uh, about, like, his entire plan, like, who Peter told about it. And Peter, of course, told his friends, but he doesn't want to tell Quentin that, that he wants to protect MJ. And in these illusions to try to, like, break Peter Parker, they show Tony Stark coming out of the grave with, like, um, half of his Iron Man suit on, and he's, like, decaying, like, you, you actually see, like, the bone of his skull, and there's, like, bugs coming out of it, it's really, really freaky, and you're like, whoa, like, they went there, <laughs> like, and everyone in the theater got, like, chills at that part, like, for real. It was, like, a serious moment in the movie. Like, up until that point, you're like, oh, okay, it's a Spider-Man movie, you know, kind of happy, kind of serious. And then it hits you with that, like, whoa, did we just see zombie Tony Stark? Like, yeah, we saw zombie Tony Stark illusion. Um, so he's trying to do all of these things to kind of, like, scare Peter. And then Peter somehow manages to break out of it. The real Nick Fury shows up, fights Quentin uh, Mysterio, and is like, hey, we got this under control, and he goes up to Peter Parker, and is like, who did you tell Peter? We gotta go save them. And then Peter tells Nick Fury that he told MJ, he told Ned, and Ned probably told Betty, who is his uh, girlfriend. And then Nick Fury starts laughing, and then it's revealed that they are still in the illusion within an illusion, so it's like Inception, you know? A dream within a dream, it's an illusion inside of an illusion. So Peter thought he was out of the illusion, but he was still in it and they fooled him and got the information, so that was like a 200 IQ play by Mysterio right there, like, props to Mysterio for that part, like, really, really good villain, Jake Gyllenhaal in this entire movie, great actor, he plays an extremely, like, good villain character in this movie, like, you really hate him, especially near the end, um, but he did a great job. So, um, then, you know, they send a bunch of, like, drones and things to go kill MJ and whatever, uh, the rest of his friends, Ned and stuff, in London, and then, uh, Beck basically thinks that Peter died because a train hit him, but Peter dodged the train and managed to get inside, but Quentin thinks that Peter's dead, so he decides to go to London to finish his plan, of having this huge catastrophe happen. So, uh, Quentin continues, you know, with his plan in London, he's gonna have, like, a huge catastrophe happen near the London Bridge. Meanwhile, Peter gets out of the train in, like, a, <laughs> the Netherlands. He gets put in, like, jail. He eventually gets out of jail by sneaking out using his Spider-Man powers. Um, Peter 
then calls uh, uh, Abby. Uh, Abby shows up with like Tony Stark's jet. They make him a new spider suit. He says he has to get to London immediately. They're gonna kill Ned. They're gonna kill MJ and the rest of his friends. And basically, what uh, Mysterio is planning is telling the public that all four elementals fuse together to create like a huge monster. And it's basically gonna kill a lot of people, including MJ and Ned and people that know his secret. And then he's gonna come in at the last minute and save everyone, so everyone on TV in London and the world will know that he's a superhero. So, Peter knows all this, so he gets his new suit, he programs it with like special explosives that he creates on like Tony Stark's a private jet that Abby picked him up with in the Netherlands. They fly over to London, Peter shows up, uh, he starts like sneaking into the drones during this fight because he tells himself that it's all fake, which it is, and during this whole thing, Abby tries to get um, attention, the attention of Nick Fury, because this whole time Nick Fury still thinks that um, Quentin is a good, you know, person, that Mysterio is a good guy, and he believes all of these lies, and Peter gets inside the holograms, which are like really advanced and like really, really futuristic, like technology-wise than anything I've ever seen, especially in like Spider-Man movies. And he starts planting ex explosives on them and destroying them. And Mysterio starts freaking out, like some of these drones are mis malfunctioning. What's going on? So he goes inside the hologram, sees Spider-Man in there, and they start fighting inside the um, kind of like cloak cloaking device of the hologram projection. It's kind of uh, difficult to explain, but they're basically inside the illusion fighting, destroying it from the inside. And then it's starting to be uncovered, like exposed to the public. Like people are starting to see the drones, starting to see that the attack is fake. Mysterio starts freaking out. Spider-Man keeps destroying more and more of the drones. There's a huge battle sequence. Spider-Man's taking out all of these dro drones, shooting at him, because, by the way, these drones are lethal. Like, they actually have weapons mounted on them, like turrets. Um, so he's just destroying all of these drones. He's trying to expose the lies. He manages to get to Mysterio, and Mysterio's really smart. Like, he sets up illusions within illusions. Um, there's this point near the end where Mysterio's like, Okay, Peter, you caught me not and then like a million drones show up and peter has to like destroy all of them and then once peter gets through those mr is like okay you win i give you back the glasses and he's like handing the glasses to peter and then peter's spider sense goes off his peter tingle and then he notices that mysterio the real one is cloaking himself in like an illusion to his uh, right and he quickly dodges a bullet as he was about to shoot him as a hologram version of him was going to hand him the glasses back that he gave to him so it, it's really crazy really complicated but it was, it was a brilliant scene in the movie really really loved it one of my favorite scenes in any like it's really sad, like, Quentin is evil, like, he really wants to kill kids in this movie, like, he wants to kill Peter, the rest of his class, just so he can be, like, a superhero and loved, like, Tony Stark, he wants to be famous, he wants to be rich and powerful, and he goes through all of these plans with his, like, group of people to do this, and it's insane, so, um, he, he stops him, of course, he, he saves the day, he, he gets to hang out with MJ, they have like a discussion, they actually end up um, kissing each other, that's like a huge scene, everyone like cheered in the theater, well not everyone, but a lot of people were like, yeah, and some people clapped, uh, people are serious about the MJ-Peter Parker relationship, like seriously, um, so they like that, um, I'm trying to think, uh, I think Peter gave MJ the broken flowers in this scene, or he gave her the broken flower necklace in a previous scene. I'm trying to remember. Either way, Peter basically declares his love for MJ. She kind of does the same thing. They give each other, um, well, he gives her a necklace that's kind of broken, and she likes it, so it was nice. Um, the scene was kind of awkward where they kiss, especially the second time. Like, it was kind of cringe, but hey, they're young people. This was like their first kiss, so... 
and hey, Peter Parker being an awkward teenager, I'm all for, I'm all for that, you know, that is Peter Parker, that is the character of Peter Parker, so it was perfect for the movie, um, he basically, you know, the rest of his teammates, everyone goes back to New York City, Nick Fury was like, I can't believe that guy was lying to us this entire time, like, that's crazy, and then he pretends to be like, I was on to him, I knew something was up, but in reality, he didn't, <laughs> so, uh, Anyway, there's two big, big after-credit scenes in this movie, so after the movie ends all nicely, you know, you think, oh, it's a happy ending, Peter got the glasses back, he got MJ, Happy is dating Aunt May, supposedly, we don't know, they didn't want to get into their relationship that much near Peter, he's kind of like annoyed that they're together, but that's another thing entirely. Um, Betty and Ned, who were on, you know, a date. Basically, the entire vacation was a date for them. They, they were hanging out all the time. As soon as they land back in New York City, Ned's like, yeah, we broke up. You know, we have to move on. That's how it is. And it's like, what? So they were basically only boyfriend and girlfriend for the vacation trip. And after they get home, it's completely off. So <laughs> it's kind of funny, but that's what happened. And... And, like, the credits start rolling, and you're like, oh, this is awesome, you know, Spider-Man's back in New York City, Peter's back, everything's good. Then there's an after credit scene, so, like, the first after credit scene is, um, of Jonah, J. Jonah Jameson of the Daily Bugle. You know, everyone knows J. Jonah Jameson, he, let's just say he's not a big fan of Spider-Man. If you've watched any of the previous Spider-Man movies, he's one of the, you know, journalist guys, head honchos over at the Daily Bugle always trying to write articles about Spider-Man, how he's a menace, and stuff like that. So, basically, before Quentin Beck, uh, uh, you know, got caught, he recorded some secret footage of Spider-Man, and he kind of, like, framed it, his, like, voice in a way that made Spider-Man seem like a villain, like Spider-Man, during his fight, said, I don't care, just kill them, when he was talking about, like, the drones or something not people so out of context though it seems like spider-man saying yeah kill everyone but he was not talking about the people he was talking to quentin back about what he did and then quentin's like spider-man's attacking me i'm a hero i was trying to save the people and then spider-man he's like he sent all of these drones out here to destroy everyone it's all spider-man's fault so then like j jonas jameson is like Yes, this is all Spider-Man's fault. He killed one of the greatest heroes the world ever had, Mysterio. And Spider-Man also did this. And then, here comes the huge reveal. He reveals Spider-Man's identity. He legit says, like, Mysterio, at the end of this video clip, live on air in Times Square, says, Oh, and by the way, I know Spider-Man's secret identity. It's Peter Parker. And then we get to see, like, Peter's face looking at, like, everyone's face, MJ and people nearby, and it's like, whoa, that means the next Spider-Man movie is going to be, like, the first Spider-Man movie where everyone knows Spider-Man's secret identity. I don't know how they're gonna, you know, brush this away. Maybe they can try to disprove this in some way, but right now, the entire world thinks that Peter Parker is Spider-Man, so, wow, in a way, Mysterio kind of won because he got what he wanted, he kind of destroyed uh, Peter's sense of security, so, I don't know, Mysterio kind of, like, got in a good punch there at the end, trying to, like, best Spider-Man, so, wow, that's, that's crazy, like, a lot of people gasped in the theater at that point, being like, whoa, like, they revealed Spider-Man's identity that's not been done in any of the movies before, um, it has happened in the comics, but not in the movies. Um, and then afterwards, there was, like, you know, all the credits. And then after all, all of the credits, like, at the very end of the movie, it was revealed that Nick Fury and Maria Hill, that appeared throughout this entire movie, you know, Nick Fury, played by Samuel L. Jackson, um, it's revealed that they weren't even the real characters. Like, this entire movie, Nick Fury was not Nick Fury. But he was actually a scroll from uh, the Captain Marvel movie. If any of you have seen Captain Marvel, uh, there's the Kree, there's the scrolls. And 
Nick Fury and Maria Hill were being played by Skrulls, while the real Nick Fury was uh, on like a spaceship out in outer space somewhere doing who knows what. So we don't know what Nick Fury is doing right now, but he is not on planet Earth at all. He has like a fake Nick Fury filling in for him over at Earth right now, so that's kind of funny. But that's the end of the movie. I skipped over a lot of things. I can't go over everything or else this would be as long as the movie, which was like two hours and 20 minutes or something. Like, it's a long movie, but great movie. Highly recommend to go see it. Loved all the Spider-Man scenes. Loved all the action fighting scenes. And I really enjoyed kind of like the relationship scenes between MJ and Peter and Peter and Ned and his friends and like the interaction with his classmates. All that stuff was great, so... Highly recommend checking out this movie. I loved it. Had a great time seeing it. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching this uh, ASMR Movie Geek video. Please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Let me know if you enjoyed listening or watching this. Uh, hopefully my ramble was uh, entertaining or interesting to listen to. I hope I didn't kind of bore you. Uh, some parts of the movie I actually kind of forgot because it was very fast-paced and a lot was going on uh, to remember. And this was my first viewing, by the way. But I had a great time. So yeah, uh, please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And uh, oh, if you want to help support the channel, head on over to patreon.com slash ASMRgaming. And with as little as $1 a month, you can actually help support the channel and the creation of videos just like this one so definitely do that if you can and uh yeah i'll be sure to have a new asmr video out very very soon thanks again for watching and i will see you all next time